Yeah. Okay. Moving right along here. I don't know if Stuart can keep up to Will with the pace, but we're going to give it a go. So everyone, this is Stuart Spence. Um, he's, a, he's a new public servant. I just, I just learned that. And he's going to be talking about working with the decentralized version control system. That's not our reality, so I don't know what you're talking about. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, let's, welcome, let's welcome Stuart. All right, thanks. Put this thing in here. Bring it up high. Great. First page. Okay, so slides, I guess you're gonna... Great, wow, I got someone to push the button for me. It's great. Uh, so to start off, if you have zero experience with Git or zero experience with coding, that's great. This is the right talk for you. The first half is for you. The second half, I'll get more technical. It depends on who's here. Uh, I'm gonna do an overview. So there's a history of Git, uh, some, uh, some of the basics, the workflow that I have experienced in different jobs, and uh, some features that make it great. Uh, what this talk is not going to be is a Git training, kind of type this, make this happen, use this command, a list of commands. There's a lot of great stuff to learn that online, and I got 20 minutes, so I'm good, but I'm not that good. Uh, also, it's not about Git internals, so really, great, awesome computer science-y stuff that I could talk about, I'm not going to, uh, because Git is also really an amazing piece of software. Uh, so the next slide. Uh, I want to know a bit who I'm talking to. Uh, so could you raise your hand if you have ever written code? Okay, good. And could you raise your hand if you've ever typed a Git command? Okay, so everyone and everyone pretty much. So I'll burn through the first part pretty quick then. Uh, so, uh, next slide. First, who I am, why I'm giving this talk. I just started a awesome job as a scientific programmer at Environment Canada, working on their supercomputer doing climate simulations. Very, very cool. Uh, I was a high school technology teacher for four years. I worked in a few software companies and startups. Um, I've been using Git, GitHub, and GitLab about seven years in a lot of different contexts. I've taught Git to graduate students and high school students. Um, and I studied computer science, which is like the math of computers. Um, I've previously used SVN and Perforce, so I know what to hate. Uh, I have uh, used Git in computer science assignments and personal projects like websites, science simulations, AI stuff, small group projects for nonprofits, also medium sized group projects for startups. Um, now, I believe that Git is the core tool for the future of digital collaboration. So, I really do think that everyone should know about it and we should be promoting it. Uh, next slide. We're going to do the ultra quick what is source code because apparently pretty much everyone here knows what it is. Uh, LibreOffice is a great uh, uh, alternative to Microsoft Word and Excel and PowerPoint. It's better, in my opinion. This is source code that makes that happen. Kind of looks like natural language, not quite. But when teams of people are working on this, they face a lot of challenges. Uh, next slide. So here are some of the things that Git solves, and it solves it very well. There's actually a lot of software that solves these problems, but Git does it really, really well, really fast, and you don't have to ask permission to solve these problems. There's a lot of advantages to it. So uh, if you're working on a, a gigantic project that's five gigabytes, and you don't want to download that 10 times a day every time your team updates it, you want to maybe just download the slight difference. So Git will do that. Uh, let's say there's a new newbie on your team, and they say, oh, I just did this really great thing on, on our project with all these, these files in our project. Uh, you want to try it out. You want to see how broken it is. And then you want to go back to what you're working on before and do that really quickly so it doesn't disrupt your, your day. Um, let's say there's another department. And they make a lot of big changes to your project. You want to very quickly see what did they do. 
What's the difference there? That is also extremely quick and great with Git. Um, you want to share important files, but not unimportant files. So another talk had actually mentioned accidentally sharing uh, keys and passwords in your projects. So Git will do ignores on that if you want. Um, there's uh, if you change. Uh, let's let's say. Uh, you're, you've all actually written code a bit, and you've all done Git. I'll, so I'll skip two or three of these, actually, to get to the more advanced stuff later. Um, something maybe used to work, but now it's broken. Well, what caused that? And you're not with Git. You're not going to be hunting it down. Was it this commit? Was it this change? Was it this one? There's a lot of great tools in Git that will actually search. You know, it'll cut down your search and do it really, really fast to find your problem. Uh, of course, who changed this file? Why did they change it? When did they change it? What's the history of this one file? Uh, Git is really fast at doing that. And lastly, there can be a lot of information overload when you're working on a project. You should not know what your team is mostly doing. Any developer, most of what they're doing, you shouldn't know. You should know the important things that they want to communicate to you. You can't keep track of 30 people every single little thing they do. You need to manage that complexity. That's what encapsulation is about, about hiding complexity and only seeing what matters. So uh, for example, sharing things only when you're ready. Someone on your team can be working on something privately and you don't even know and then they're ready to share it. You know, if you've ever worked on a, a Google Doc maybe, right, with 10 people and you're typing and then someone deletes a paragraph up here and suddenly you're text is jumping all over the place. You don't want to see that as they're working on it, maybe. It just doesn't matter. Uh, so uh, next slide. Oh, well, the white text is not there. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was actually a purple background. I guess something, something happened. So on the left, as you can see labeled clearly, is Git. Now this is a tool. and. People often confuse that with GitLab, GitHub, and Bitbucket, and a thousand other services. On the right, things like this are websites, businesses, organizations, all kinds of different things. Git on the left is actually the core tool, which is open source. And it's important when you're working with these platforms that you know the difference of what is doing what. Um, so Git tracks changes to computer files, and it helps you share those changes with others. And a lot of other things that those platforms do isn't actually Git, and I'll get into that more later. Um, it is, and it's, of course, a decentralized version control system. And I'm going to spend 10 minutes, or not 10 minutes, uh, four minutes on that. So uh, next slide. Oh, yes. So here's, this is going to be a lot of slides like quickly. Um, this is GitHub. It's a list of projects. And, and next one. Here is GitLab.com. So this is the GitLab business that owns GitLab.com. It's, it's uh, just like GitHub, offers a lot of the same services. And next. This is GitLab. It's the same platform, the same kind of website, except it's deployed on a Shared Services Canada computer somewhere on the moon that we never see. I don't know. Uh, and next slide. And this is actually another one uh, in Environment Canada, the Canada Science Network. We also have a GitLab. So it's important to know that with GitLab, you can actually take, you know, there's Git as the core, but with GitLab, you can actually take the, the kind of visual experience to kind of smooth things over. A lot of non technical people can use GitLab, non technical people can't really use Git. But with services like this, they can. Um, so next slide. Yes, and so it does project management. Um, so this is uh, a game I'm working on for fun. This is a list of things I want to do. And next slide. Next slide, yes. And this is a specific one, of course. You can you know, give it a thumbs up. You can comment deadlines and due dates and tags and all kinds of things. That's not Git. It's nice. It's very useful. It's a, but it's a project management tool. 
and you can actually see other services kind of try to blur the lines between what Git is and what their business is. And you want to definitely make that clear and know where the lines are, are drawn there. Uh, in the case of, of this game, oh, that, that's okay. In the case of this game, I had actually switched from one platform to another recently, which I could easily do because I'm using Git and I'm not so attached to the, you know, fancy colors on top. Uh, it, it's, it's easier for me to do that. Uh, next slide now. If you are technical, which a lot of you are, it's very easy to try Git. Download it, launch it, just start typing stuff. That, that's it. Uh, next slide. If you are non-technical, and this was uh, an example from a GitLab presentation I, I watched. Uh, and next slide. All of these people are using Git through GitLab. So a marketing manager in the presentation that was misspelled. It wasn't me. Uh, there's a lawyer, head of sales, graphic designer. They're all using Git. They don't even really know it, but the web service is using Git uh, to manage the contributions they're doing to all the files that are involved in, a, in an organization. Uh, next slide. So quick Git history. It was made by Linus Torvalds in 2005 to help with the enormously complex and awesome Linux project. So he made it to help work on that, to help people collaborate. It was taken over by Junio Hamano uh, in 2005 also, and it surpassed SVN, the other most popular one, in 2014. It's now by far the most popular version control system, and for good reason. Uh, next slide. Oh, slide, slide the button. Yes. So this is kind of funny. Uh, currently not looking for another employer. Do not welcome getting contacted by recruiters. This is what happens when you create, help create the most popular collaboration tool on the planet. Man, this guy must get spammed like crazy. Hey, could you help me with this? My, my homework, you know, just, yeah. Uh, so next, next slide. Um, yes, so one thing to note too, uh, is I was a high school teacher. I've been to 20 hackathons. I've given a lot of workshops and things. Uh, I've, I was a TA as well. Students today only know Git. And that's, that's a good thing. But if you use SVN or CVS or Perforce, no one you hire will know how to use that. No one. Everyone I meet at hackathons and programming events, they've all heard of Git. Most of them know how to use it a little bit, and these are students who don't, they haven't had a chance to learn much, many tools. Um, they've never heard of, of SVN or Perforce, for, or the alternatives to Git. Um, and uh, I don't know, to sell you on this further, lots of big companies use it. Pretty much every pr uh, province I could find uses it. They have uh, GitHub pages. NRC, Service Canada, StatsCan, of course, as we're, we're learning today. Uh, next slide. Right, so uh, Git Basics, a repo, repository, a project, it's all the same thing. It's really just a folder with stuff in it. And there's also a folder called .git in that. So next slide. This is an example of a project. It's called .git. That means you know you're looking at a Git folder. So that means all the files in this, this folder are tracked extensively with Git. Um, next slide. Uh, pull request and a merge request, pretty well the same thing. Depends on the platform you're using and how they define those. It just means people want to collaborate. You know, if someone sent me a pull request, well, that means I want to collaborate. I did some work, I want to share it with you. That's really all that means. Uh, next slide. Uh, a commit is like a version. You might see a huge commit hash right here. Looks like that. If you don't define a version like that's nice, like 2.1, you know, it will just generate that. And when I'm working on projects, I will commit a lot often, so I'll have hundreds of those. It's not a big deal. Uh, you don't often see them. You only see them when you look them up. Uh, but that's a commit or a version. It's kind of when you take the entire project and you're like, I like it how it is, 
and you, f you freeze it how it is, and now in the future, at any time, your project can go back to exactly how it was before. Um, that's a version control system. But of course, uh, as I said, Git does it greatly, in a great way. Um, right, so a uh, little story here at a startup uh, I was working at who used Perforce. Well, we had Perforce Day. Thank you. We had Perforce Day once where our license was expired, except it wasn't. So my CEO spent all day on the phone. Hey, I have two years left on my license. What's with this? Oh, we don't know what's going on. All of our developers couldn't work because some files were locked. We couldn't share our code. It was really actually quite funny. But that's not good for our business, of course. Um, and where are we at? Oh, next slide. Next slide, next slide. Uh, oh, I, I forgot uh, that, that basics one here. So a branch, if, say there's a project and there's two people working on it, the moment that someone makes a change and they do this, and then the other person makes a change and they go this way, it's a branch. It's like a tree. In Git, we use kind of a tree vocabulary. So in this case, there's two people working on it. And uh, next slide. And you'll sometimes want to do a merge. And that means the work we've done, we just want to put it back together. Git would be useless if it couldn't do a merge. And one of the reasons it's so great is merges are very easy, very fast. And in uh, Perforce and SVN, they are not. They're nightmares. So people don't do them. And what happens when you don't do it? You end up for two weeks working on something, and now it's even harder to merge. So you're not even collaborating anymore, because it's hard to literally to collaborate. Um, next slide. Yes. So decentralization is one of the key ideas in Git, and it's incredibly important and incredibly useful and awesome. It really just means no one place is more important than another place. Um, so I had mentioned I used to be on one platform, and then I changed my mind about it, and then I went to another platform. So that was easy to do, because my copy was the same as the one they had, and now I just put it that way. And in fact, at the end of the uh, presentation, I've given you guys a lot of resources to look into this more. I've kind of selected them for based on who you might be. Um, and that's a page on my website. And to actually put it up, I kind of experienced the decentralization moment because I worked on it on my computer and then I wanted to put my changes up uh, onto the cloud. Oops, I was pointing to the old service. So I repointed it to GitLab. Now it's good. Then I went on my website, connected to my website's computer, the server, and then I wanted those new changes. Oops, that was pointing to the old one. Well, now I just pointed to my new one. So I just didn't, it just, it took me seven seconds to redirect where I was going because nothing was the key critical thing. You don't want that. Other people have mentioned vendor locking. Oh boy, does that happen. Well, it can't happen if the sister's system is decentralized, right? Because you're not, you're not locked. You can't, no one place is more important than the other. That includes a business, uh, a Government of Canada service that maybe went down, like uh, our part of Shared Services Canada and Environment Canada for like an hour, like we had some serious problems, and it was centralized, so it crippled us for an hour. Um, what else we got? Uh, next slide, please. Uh, speed, really, really fast. Have a look at the resources, because apparently I'm not as fast as Git is, so I gotta skip this one. Next. Um, it allows you to do a non-linear workflow. Uh, the time, we got a minute 20. Great. Um, non-linear workflow. So you can be in a group in different locations, different time zones. You're not paralyzed. With Perforce, you might lock a file. It tells your group, don't work on this. I'm going to do it. Well, you go to sleep, and then your partner in, in Vancouver needs to work on it, and you, they're not sure, maybe I should unlock it. But Git, it's all decentralized, and it helps you merge together later. Uh, next slide. Uh, next slide. Limitations. There's a couple. Git tracks any file, but it's not great at tracking binary files. 
you still do it. It's fine. Uh, next slide. <laughs> Actually, just skip through the next three slides. Yeah, I'm just showing you can right click on a binary file and next, next, next. And you see gibberish, next file. Um, so, you know, really if you're working on a binary file, you just replace it. That's, that's the, the idea there. Um, best practices, merge often, which really just means collaborate often. Uh, it's okay to share broken commits. It's okay, just, just tell, you know, make sure it's your personal thing you're working on and you're not breaking the main core project, but it just lets you collaborate more often because you're not worried about breaking things. Uh, tell your team about a major change in the project before so everyone can get ready for it. Um, let's see, of the four last things I could talk about, which one should I talk about in the remaining time I have? Um, well, Git really just lets you be more adventurous and try new things. So there's a psychology and science podcast I listened to. They did some research about creativity and bureaucracy. It turns out when you don't know how to get approval for things, say, oh, do I need to sign three forms or five, or do I need to ask this person, or who would I ask for this? When you're unsure about how to get started, you don't even think creatively. You don't even think about that creative idea. Your brain just, nope, right? Now with Git, you don't ask permission. You can create your own private branch and, see, and really go crazy and, and work on something and only share it if you want to and you don't have to ask permission, uh, unlike uh, other um, systems. So next slide. Next slide, next slide, next slide, next slide. I think we're going to go for a conclusion slide. One more? Oh, we're not covering this today. <laughs> Next one. That's a good joke if anyone knows what that was. Um, yeah, so here are the resources. Um, I'm not sure, uh, not sure how much time I might have for questions or, or if any, maybe not. Uh, but of course, I'm going to be here for the rest of the day. Um, definitely go there to learn more. Uh, there's a lot I didn't get a chance to talk about. Um, if you have a Git question, please ask me. Uh, actually, the next slide has my, there you go, my email address. Any Git question, how to do it in small teams, large teams, I'd love to help you. So go ahead. Uh, you can, vous pouvez demander en français aussi. Même les questions maintenant, si on a le temps, je sais pas. Uh, I don't know if we have any time for, for questions, but uh, is that, no? Oh, we're getting the shake. All right, so thank you a lot. Uh, come talk to me later. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Stuart.